Hello and welcome to Codeblaze and today I'm starting a new series in Unreal Engine in which we'll be creating voxel chunks or Minecraft like terrain and this time I'll be uh, doing it the proper way where I'll be building meshes using like we'll be creating the vertex arrays and the triangles uh, this is an updated version of a pre previous video that I created uh, in which I created uh, voxel terrain using blueprints but that was basically using instanced meshes and creating cubes according to a height map and another reason i'm doing this again is because the noise plugin that was used in that video is no longer maintained and it's not uh, supported with the current version of Unreal engine so there's a new noise plugin out there uh, if i just open my plugins and it is called yeah it's this fast noise generator or fng you can search for it on the marketplace and it's available for free so you can basically add it again the api is pretty much same because both of these noise plugins uh, work on the outburns fast noise library so there won't be much difference here and what we'll be creating is this uh, blueprint actor called chunk which you can place in the world and it will take a call according to the world position you'll be it will create a height map and generate the mesh so if i basically move it you can see the mesh changes it's not the most performant while changing the mesh but yeah it will work and if i go inside this you'll see there are no hidden faces now that was a problem with the previous method i used using instance cube so this saves a lot of performance but there are faces between the chunk borders now that is something you can even uh, reduce that but it is not something that we I'll be covering over in this video series. So that's it. I'll just reset this to 1600. So to do this, we'll need a few things that we'll need to set up. So the first thing is you will need to create two enums. Uh, one would be a block enum. So to create an enum, you just right click and go under blueprints and you can create an enumeration from here. So this block enum just basically holds the different types of blocks that you want in your voxel terrain. So for me that would be the null block, the air block and the stone block. And if you are going full minecraft style you can add all the dirt block, glass blocks and you know all the different types of blocks that you need in your voxel terrain you can just add those in this enum. And the second enum that I have is this direction enum which basically has six uh, constants that's the forward, right, back, left, up and down corresponding to the different axes so this enum is basically to make stuff more readable otherwise you can get away without this enum and use basically numbers 0 1 2 3 4 5 for the corresponding directions and that's it so the final result would look something like this in which we have three parts the block generation so this is where we create the height map and fill in the blocks array according to the height map then we have the mesh building this is where we populate the vertex data the triangle data and the uv data and finally we have the rendering where we use the generated data to render like create the actual mesh and show it in the game and to do this we have a few variables and a few functions and that's what we'll be setting up in this video so i basically created an empty blueprint with with the base class as an actor and I have created all these variables and functions so I'll go over them and you can create them as you uh, follow along so the first thing I did was add a procedural mesh component so if you go into add components and search for procedural mesh you can basically add this component and I basically made this component as the default root I moved it over the default scene root and it doesn't matter if it's the scene root or not basically you need to have this procedural mesh component this is the component to which will pass the generated vertex data and it will actually render it and then we have some variables so we'll go over functions later so the first variable we have is the block vertex data so this basically is a vector array and it holds eight values so these are basically the vertex positions of a basic cube so cube has eight points and this basically has those and then we have the block triangle data now to explain this i'll just open my notepad file yeah so the data i have here is actually the data that i have used in unity so i have basically converted over to the unreal uh, system so there is a change in the units and the axes also 
but what I need to explain here is the triangles. So for triangles, I have uh, six arrays corresponding to each of the face. So if I want to create a face in the like the front face of the cube, I'll be using zero, one, two, three points. And if I want to create like the back face of the cube, I'll be using this set of points. And these numbers actually correspond to the index of the vertex positions. So the front face would actually use the zero, one, two, and three, these four positions to create the face. So that's what's there in the triangles array. And I basically flattened it out. So rather than it being a two dimensional array, I flattened it out to a one dimensional array. And that can easily, and you can basically convert any higher order array to a lower order array and use a formula to get the correct index. So you can see these four, I have these all uh, elements here. So I'll have these both block data and the vertex data in the descriptions. So I'll just copy it here and paste it there. So you can select the whole thing and actually paste it here. So you won't need to even type this everything. And once you have the block data and the triangle data, so the triangle data is basically an integer array. If I didn't go over that. Next, we another constant that we have is the size of the chunk in x, y, and z. So this is basically an integer and I have set it to 16. So you can have, if you want chunks of, like if you don't want them to be of the same size on each axis, you can do that. but I'd rather have them as a 16 by 16 chunks. Next, we have a scale. Now, this is the scale of each and individual cube, and I'll basically default this to one. And uh, one would be pretty much okay for each and every use case. You won't need anything other than one. But you can play with it if you want something else, and you can even have it as a float. But for my case, I just want it as one. And these are the four constants that we'll have, and these won't change. Next, we'll have three more arrays, which will hold the vertex data, the triangle data, and the UV data. So keep in mind the block vertex data and the actual meshes vertex data are two different things. This is a constant, and this is an array that will populate while the generation, and this is the thing that will pass to the procedural mesh to the final rendering. So the vertex data is a vector array. The triangle data is an integer array. And we have the UV data, which is a vector 2D array. And other than that, we have these chunk blocks array. So this is basically an array of our enumeration type from the, like we create the enumeration block. So it's a array of that. And these are all the variables that we'll be needing. Other than this, we have few um, helper functions. So we have this create phase. And this create fun phase function will basically create a face anywhere in the world in any direction. So the create face will basically take a position in the direction. So direction will be like of a cube, which face will be created, the front face, the back face, the top face and everything. The get face vertices will basically take the direction and the position of whatever we have supplied and it will query the block vertex data and get the proper vertices for the current face that needs to be created is empty is a basically a boolean check function that i'll have and it will be used during generation this will basically say whether a given block is an empty block or not so the null block and the air block is an empty block whereas the stone block the stone block is an opaque block so you can have this thing customized to as your use case then we have the get block index so Actually, this block array is a one dimensional array and considering the size I have is 16. So the length of this array would be 4096. Actually, the blocks in the chunk would be in a 16 by 16 by 16 3D array and I have again flattened it down to a one dimensional array. And this get block index will basically take an X, Y, Z and position and compute the index corresponding index in the blocks array and return it. So it's again a utility function that will be used in many places this get position in direction is again a utility function so if we specify or uh, give it a vector or like a position anywhere in the world and we specify find me the next position in this direction so it will basically increment the value by one of the corresponding axis so if we want the position in the forward direction so if i give it zero 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 it will return me one zero zero it will basically increment the x-axis and return me Again, this is a utility function that will be used. 
and finally we'll have this check function so this function will be used to check whether the like basically we have empty uh, this is where we'll do the checking of the correspondent uh, the neighboring blocks whether they are empty blocks or uh, opaque blocks and depending upon that we'll be create, creating the face if required so these are all the things that you need to require to do this chunk generation and we'll be doing this whole thing in a single blueprint and that too most of this will happen in the construction script you can do this in begin play if you want like if you want to change the seed and everything at runtime you can do that but for this tutorial purposes doing it in construction script is easy then i don't need to play again and again i can basically show you the mesh here in the viewport and another thing is that other than this create face functions all of these functions will be pure functions and we'll be modifying the inputs and outputs as and when we implement them so this is basically what is required for the setup and I'll find again show you what the final result would be. So we'll be creating these chunks. Okay. And in the next episode, I hope we will be able to implement the get, uh, create face function. So if you leave, leave a like. And if you like this and if you have any other suggestions, please leave them down below in the comments. And subscribe for the upcoming videos. And I hope you like this. Thank you. Bye.